Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we are going to talk about the Dorgan and Bart's banners, which are the next banners coming to Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. So we're going to talk about who's on the banners and if I think you should pull or not. So we've got a banner with the Dorgan and we've got a banner with Bart's. Um, now I'm going to talk about it assuming that these side characters do not change. I think these for sure will be the same. I don't see any reason these characters would change, right? So let's start with Dorgan's banner. Um, we have Lise as a side character. I really don't think you need to worry about Lise. She's an LD only damage dealer. Um, she's just not going to compete with other damage dealers. She can do like some brave gain stuff. Like she has some okay thing things in her kit, but she's just not really in the meta right now. So I wouldn't really worry about Lise for any reason. Um, then we have Galif. Now, Galif, on the other hand, is a top-tier pick for, like, an LD-only character. I would say Galif is actually an LD-only character worth chasing. Like, he's that good. Um, he is a very good cover tank. And with a lot of the off-turn shenanigans this month, he's going to play really well with a lot of the characters. Especially if you're going to go for Reno BT. Galif is a character that can work really well um, on a Reno-type squad. So uh, Galif is an incredible character. He's a dodge counter tank that over time will do a ton of da damage. I still feel like his counters hit very decently hard for what he is. Um, and he helps keep your party safe at the same time. So these types of counter tank characters are just so good and so valuable. Um, I just don't think you can ever have too many of them. And at, at a budget level where you only have to power him up through LD, um, he is a ridiculously good character worth grabbing. So if you decide to go in on here, getting Galif is a very, very good, good idea, right? Um, then we have Dorgan. Uh, Dorgan now is a character that I think a lot of people like. The thing with Dorgan is I think he caters to a specific playstyle, and he is a counter character, right? Or um, I should say an off-turn character, not a counter character. But he's an off-turn character, but he's kind of conditional. Whereas off-turn is very good, but it only happens when you break. Now, if set up properly, he can do double counters every turn. Because the way he'll work is if you get a situation where both of the enemies are not broken, if you hit the enemy with a single target attack, that counts as a break, so then he counters or he follows up. And then if his follow-up breaks, it will cause him to follow up again. Um, so he works really well with characters that unbreak easily. So like Aranea, Vayne, characters like that. And then um, can combo really well with BT effects like Iris or Sephiroth, right? So if you like doing those types of team comps, he can be very good. Now the thing with Dorgan is he's really just getting his BT here. And I think a very slight rework, nothing too major because he's already still very good, right? So if you already have Dorgan built through FR, I actually don't think you need to chase his BT at all. His BT just gives like the standard BT auras and then it adds Wind Enchant. The Wind Enchant is going to help his own FR condition, but you can easily run him with a different FR as the main FR and just use him for the off turn, right? So, or just, uh, yeah, just abuse his damage without using his FR as the main FR, I think is probably the better way to do it. So I would advise that you know, if you already have Dorgan FR, you probably can just skip the banner. I don't think you need to chase at the BT at all, um, to be honest. And if you don't have Dorgan at all, I don't know that you have to get Dorgan because there's going to be way more off-turn and counter-type characters coming this month that don't require breaking. So they're less conditional and easier to run. So I, I think Dorgan can be a fairly easy skip for most players, to be honest. But Galif is a ridiculously good... Um, E our LD only character, right? Um, now, the other thing that we need to talk about is I, I had a request. I'm trying to think here in terms of calls. Um, none of these characters are standing out to me, like in terms of their calls being amazing. But I did get a request to start talking about spheres, right? And I would say Lisa's sphere is actually very notable. She's got one of those D spheres that is a um, party attack up. So I think Lisa's sphere can be very, very good for sure, right? Um, Dorgan and Galif, I actually don't know off the top of my head what their spheres are. I probably should have looked at that ahead of time, but they don't ring a bell. It's like a sphere I recommend a lot. So it's probably safe to say that you don't need to chase their EXs for the sphere. But Lisa's sphere is one I do know I talk about a lot for the D sphere be being very good. Um, and like I said, in terms of calls, I don't think there's anything notable here in terms of calls. So overall, I'd say this banner is actually a really safe skip for most people. Um, but <laughs> Galif... Uh, the Galif, uh, you know, as an LD only character in Lee's sphere is actually like some of the better things here. Dorgan himself is still really good, but once again, you've got to like that team comp. And I don't think his BT is actually that important if you don't want to grab it, right? Um, and then over here, we have the Bart side. So Bart's is going to be paired with Edward and Zell. Um, 
Edward and Zell, I think, are both very skippable characters. Uh, Zell is a damage, like, Zell is literally just a straight-up damage dealer. I kind of refer to him as a mini Terra. Like, he's a damage dealer, puts himself in specific modes, takes a lot of turns in a row. He can, like, break steel and things like that, but he, his damage is just nowhere near what you want it to be as a damage dealer. So there really isn't any reason to pull for Zell. Um, I don't think of his call or his sphere being anything crazy either. Um, Edward... He has a little bit of value, like being a support character like Edward, you know, can have maybe some value. He can get away with like not doing very good damage. Um, his big thing is he does lullaby, right? Which can basically put the enemies to sleep. It's a buff that will tick down any times the enemy takes a turn or you attack them. So depending on how you manage it, he can kind of shut down enemies a little bit. But I, I don't know that I could highly recommend Edward right now either. Um, and then we have Bards. Now, Bartz is a character that he's kind of in an odd spot right now where um, he definitely had his time to shine. I remember when I did my BT token guides early on, I was recommending his BT like every month for like four or five months in a row because he was just that good, right? The problem is, is the state of the game has changed to where like the type of character Bartz kind of doesn't fit with the meta right now. So I think Bartz's problem is two things. Like he does get like some upgrades here to like up his damage and bring it like closer to the meta. The problem with Bartz is like what he is really known for is being a really good aura bot, right? The problem is, is outside of that, he doesn't really do a lot of support. Okay. And then, so then if you look at him as a damage dealer, he doesn't really do enough to be considered a damage dealer. So I see Bartz as like an in-between character where like he has good auras, but he doesn't give you anything else you want out of a support character. Like he doesn't force charge. He doesn't heal. I think he does do some brave gaining, which is nice, but like healing and force charging are two really big things you want out of your support character, right? Um, and then we look at him as a damage dealer and I don't think he's going to really compare to other damage dealers. So Bartz is kind of just in this odd spot. Like where, where do you want to put him or when do you want to use him? Now he does have other really interesting mechanics. Like he has gravity. He has some instant break in his kit. He has a wind, uh, imperil as an aura, um, which back in the day was way more important in today's game. All of those things aren't nearly as important. Like instant breaking isn't as important. Uh, the gravity isn't as important. We just have so many busted characters and ways to get around those types of mechanics that, that Bartz isn't really, those things aren't as needed. The reason why Bartz was so good back then is his auras were like really top tier and those mechanics were very useful in a lot of fights. Um, Nowadays, I just don't find those mechanics as useful, and if I need those mechanics, I can get those on other characters that are doing other things a lot better. Um, so I'd say if you don't have Barts at all, I think this is a super easy, complete skip. I would say if you're in my situation where like you already have Barts max out because he was so good back in the day, like I have mine blue green like fully decked out. I think for people that have him maxed out, it is worth it to like take it the FR just to make him a nice echo addition to your box, like another character you can use, right? It's not like Bartz is terrible. Um, it's just that for a player that doesn't have him, for what he's doing, he's not really worth like expending gems or the resources to get the full kit, build him, use the ingots. It's just not worth it. Now, for a player, like I said, that has already invested those things and you're just slapping an FR on them, I think going in and grabbing the FR is fine. So, like, what I'm going to do, and like I said, I don't know that I recommend Dorgan BT isn't, like, super highly uh, needed as well, right? But since I want Bart's FR, I'm going to go on Dorgan's banner, which is tickets. I'm going to ticket for Bart's FR here, and if I get lucky and hit the Dorgan BT, that's great. But it, it definitely not worth chasing. So, I would say... In total, the two banners here are probably, like, this is probably one of the most skippable weeks of the month. I would, if, if I'm going to be completely honest here, neither of these characters are needed. Uh, Dorgan is great, but he's more niche in terms of, like, you got to build the right teams for him. And if, if you focus on Dorgan and make him work, he is ridiculous. But I think for the average player, like I said, there's going to be off turn that is way easier to use. Um, and that maybe do some things a little bit better than Dorgan. And I think Bart's just, he doesn't really have a great place right now. Like, if I'm thinking of myself in team building, like, I, I don't know where it's like, oh my god, I need to have Bart's here. Other than a boss that's going to be really annoying and require wind, right? So, uh, other than that, I think everything's fairly skippable here. Um, Bart's does have a good sphere, I will say that. I He has, like, one of the best Max Brave spheres in the game. Max Brave isn't something a lot of characters need, but when, they, when characters want Max Brave, it is a top-tier sphere you can use. So you can keep an eye out for Bart's EXs. I think those are worth saving. Um, Edward, 
I want to say his sphere was decent off the top of my head, but it's not like, I don't think it's an attack one. He might be a max brave or a brave gain one. Could be okay. And I don't recall Zell sphere being anything amazing. Actually, no, Zell sphere, I think might actually be good. You know what? I'm going <laughs> to, I'm actually going to look his up really, really quick. Um, if you guys don't mind me here on the video, you can just like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go into, um, uh, oh gosh, Tom Berry Troop really quick. Let me just check. Cause I don't want to misinform you. I, Cause Zell actually has an A sphere. And if I remember right, his actually might be kind of good. So let me just check out Zell really quick. Uh, I'm using Tonberry Troop, by the way, which, by the way, you guys should all check out Tonberry Troop. Fantastic website for uh, looking at characters. So we can look at we can look at his sphere right here. So his sphere. Oh yeah, it's, so it is a, it is a good attack up on weakness damage. So yeah, Zell sphere I think is definitely something you can look out for. And I guess while I'm here, sure, let's look up Edward as well. Um, he, here's what happened, you guys. I jumped into the should you pull video, and as I started talking, I was um remembering that I told people I'll talk about spheres. So normally what I'll do is I'll kind of refresh myself on the spheres ahead of time. But right now I'm kind of just going off the top of my head but let's look up um edward really quick because his was one that i was kind of thinking might be an okay one let me just double check edward's sphere for you guys right here um his sphere is max brave and eye brave yeah i mean it's solid because there are some brave game characters that want that i just know that edward's sphere isn't one i recommend a ton but i would definitely say if we go back to the banners right um i think bart's max brave is actually a top tier max brave one zell's is a really solid attack one you can use and then for spheres, uh, Lisa's a really good D-sphere because that's a party attack up, right? Um, and then other than that, yeah, like I said, though, I think these are very skippable. Honestly, if I were to look at all these characters, I think Galif is probably the winner here. Like, I love Galif, and maybe I'm biased because I like my defense off-turn comps. But if I, like, if I was recommending anything on these banners to, like, a brand new, to, to a brand new player... I would honestly say just getting Gallop on a budget is such a nice addition to your roster. So anyways, guys, you let me know if you're going to summon or not. Let me know what you think of these characters. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.